Hello, my name is Eric Snodgrass, and I am the co-founder and senior atmospheric scientist for Agrabel Incorporated. In this video, I would like to update you on the current weather conditions across the United States and forecast the upcoming weather as we prepare for the transition from winter to spring in the U.S. While this picture is of course fake, many of those from Boston feel that it is not too far off. After a slow start to the winter in terms of snowfall, the last month has been nothing short of spectacular. Boston and nearby locations have set all-time records for snowfall in a 30-day time period, amassing over 80 inches of snow in some locations. This is currently the third snowiest winter on record, and the first and second records are in jeopardy of losing their ranks. While the previous picture was fake, this one is certainly real. Boston has plowed already over 230,000 miles in the last 40 days, which is approximately the distance from the Earth to the Moon. Over 60,000 tons of salt have been spread, and the snowplow operators have racked up nearly 120,000 hours of plow time. This has been one extremely expensive winter, to say the least, for the Northeast United States. What is interesting is that while the Northeast has been buried in snow, and nearly all places east of the Mississippi River have been cold, winter 2014-2015 has actually been quite warm for the lower 48. We are nowhere near the record cold that we had in 2013-2014. For example, check out the difference in the snow cover from this time a year ago to right now. You can clearly see how much worse last winter was compared to this winter. In fact, December through January of this winter ranks as the fifth warmest in the lower 48. We can thank the western U.S. for this stat, as they have seen unseasonably warm weather for much of this winter. In fact, while Boston and the Northeast have been plunged into single-digit temperatures and mountains of snow, parts of the Great Plains have seen temperatures soaring into the 60s and even 70s, while the West Coast has been even warmer. We'll have more on this in just a few minutes. Let's turn our attention to the next winter storm system that is pushing across the central United States. This animation shows the mean sea level pressure along with precipitation type and intensity. Brewing out of the southern United States is another strong winter storm that has its sights set on the Appalachian Mountains. Due to the extremely cold air already in place across the eastern two-thirds of this country, this system's southerly track will bring snow to places that rarely see much snow. In this animation, we are watching the accumulated snowfall for the next three and a half days. Notice how Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, and parts of North Carolina are expecting several inches of snow. I have heard that schools in Atlanta have been shut down in fear of this system, although they are right on the boundary where the southern extent of the snow and the northern extent of the rain will reside. As you can see here, the National Weather Service has issued winter storm warnings for a large section of the United States in advance of the storm. Notice too the wind chill warnings across the northeast, where wind chills will drop to 20 degrees below zero in many locations Sunday into Monday. Well, let's look a little bit further out, and here is a forecast for this coming weekend and early into next week. The United States seems locked into a pattern of cold out east and warm in the west. Dry conditions will continue to plague the west coast states, while above average precipitation is likely from the front range of the Rocky Mountains, extending across the south into the Appalachians and eventually into the east coast. This pattern is all too familiar and likely will stay with us through the remainder of February. Looking out longer term into March, April, and May, the temperature forecast provided here is from the National Multimodel Ensemble, or NMME. We can see that the eastern two-thirds of the country is forecast to break out of winter's icy grip and move toward normal, while the west continues to stay on average above normal in terms of temperature. When looking for a reason for this pattern, we need to investigate the behavior of the sea surface temperatures in the Pacific Ocean. Here is a look at the most recent sea surface temperature anomalies across the Pacific. Notice that the pattern across the Pacific is seen as a cool tongue of water stretching from China and Japan that is surrounded by warm anomalies from Alaska to the Central Pacific. Sea surface temperature characteristics in the Pacific are best characterized by the sign of the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, or PDO, which is an oscillation that represents the sea surface temperatures across the Pacific. When in the pattern I just showed, the PDO is said to be in its positive or warm phase. Here's an image of the sea surface temperature configurations when the PDO is in its positive phase. Notice how similar this graph looks when compared to the previous image of sea surface temperatures I just showed. It has only been recently that the PDO has moved from its negative phase, 
where it has primarily been for several years, to its positive phase. On this graph, the red bars indicate the positive phase of the PDO, while the blue represent the negative or cold phase. These records go back to the mid-1800s, and having such a lengthy record allows us to correlate the sign of the PDO with other weather events, which is what we want to do next. One of the strongest correlations is seen in the winter and spring temperatures across the western U.S. and Canada. Shown here are the surface air temperature anomalies typically found when the PDO is in its positive phase, which is where it is right now. During the winter and spring, it is very common to have warm west and cool east in the United States. While the correlation with precipitation is not as strong as it is with temperature, we can see that the northern parts of California typically receive more precipitation, while Oregon and Washington remain a little bit drier than normal. We can also see that the southern Mississippi and Ohio River valleys are typically dry for winter and spring. This precipitation pattern has certainly been in place this winter, as we will see shortly. Often when the PDO returns to its positive phase, El Nino-like conditions will follow. Over the past year, we have been forecasting El Nino with our statistical forecasting system, and have been very accurately forecasting the behavior of the weak El Nino we've had since last August. Knowing that the PDO has moved into its positive phase, we can look to see how the ensemble members of the NMME are forecasting the next nine months in terms of El Nino conditions across the Pacific. As we can see here, nearly all forecasts of sea surface temperature anomalies across the Central Pacific remain positive, suggesting that the weak El Nino that started last summer will persist through much of this year. To supplement this forecast, our statistical forecasting system shows a similar forecast across the Pacific, with the rebuilding of weak El Nino conditions through the end of this year. Shown here are the typical winter weather patterns during El Nino. Over the next month and a half, El Nino typically warms and dries the Pacific Northwest through Alaska, and dries out the Mississippi and Ohio River valleys. As we look forward to spring and the start of the next growing season, it will be important to monitor both temperature and precipitation as El Nino and the positive phase of the PDO have a noticeable impact on the United States weather. Here's the most recent look at the USDA's drought monitor map. Over the past few months, drought has intensified in central and southern California. In fact, for the first time in recorded history, central California, near San Francisco, did not receive rain in January which is climatologically their wettest month of the year. Drought conditions have been relieved somewhat in Northern California, but interior parts of Oregon and Washington have been abnormally dry. This is all very characteristic of the positive phase of the PDO. In addition, the drought in the Southern and Central parts of California is expected to persist through fall of 2015, as the rainy season has nearly passed and the climatologically drier months are on their way. This will have a major impact on the agricultural production from this area, as reservoirs, groundwater levels, and stream flows have already been severely compromised by the record-breaking drought this area has seen over the last year and a half. Here's a map of the last 30 days of precipitation. Again, notice how dry Southern California has been, while Northern California has been actually quite wet. Notice, too, that the Southern Mississippi and Ohio River valleys have been dry, too. It seems as though the connection between the positive phase of the PDO and the weather in the United States has been played out quite well this past six weeks. We will need to watch these major growing areas as spring rains move in to the Midwest and planting begins. Right now, the abnormal dryness across parts of the Corn Belt is not something of major concern, but we will be watching the forecast closely to see how this region's weather evolves over the next six weeks. To finish this presentation, we want to give you a forecast for the soybean conditions in Brazil. Over the last month, the general pattern of dryness, as seen here, over much of the prime grain region has had an impact on plant health and productivity. As such, numerous reporting agencies have lowered their expected yields from Brazil and have come into alignment with the numbers that we have been forecasting for the last four to five months. Current estimates are for 94.5 million tons of beans to be harvested, a number that has been lowered significantly since the start of the year. Well, thank you for your time. We hope that this presentation has offered much insight into how weather will impact ag producers around the United States. We at Agribull Incorporated are committed to giving you the best information we can about weather so you can best plan your operations to maximize your yields.